What's up, future respiratory therapist? You got it. We're back with the Drager ventilator. This time we're talking about compliance and resistance related to pressure regulated volume control. What happens in that mode when we see changes in compliance and resistance? Let's find out. Okay, so we are now in a mode that is going to look very similar to PRVC. That's pressure regulated volume control. Now the Drager doesn't have PRVC, but it does have auto flow. And when you turn on the auto flow in the advanced settings, what that does is essentially takes volume control and turns it into a pressure regulated volume control. So it's interesting because I have a tidal volume set here, tidal volume of 450. What's interesting is I don't have a flow to set. That's my first indication that I know that I'm probably in some type of PRVC. I do have an eye time. So what this is gonna do is this is now a pressure control mode of mechanical ventilation. Look at the pressure waveform. Square, square, square. Yet I'm in volume, that's weird. It's not because you're actually in a pressure regulated volume control type mode. So you're gonna get pressure control breaths that are automatically going to target this tidal volume. If you look at where we are right now, our XL tidal volumes are coming in at 456, 445. Now this is baseline. Got one rubber band on. This is where we've been starting. This is part three of the three part series. We did the same thing with volume control, did the same thing with pressure control, and here we are now with PRVC. Now what I'm gonna do is an inspiratory hold. And look what happened. It looks very similar to what we saw in pressure control. We saw that there was not a big drop from peak inspiratory pressure down to plateau. Instead, plateau essentially stays with where your pressure is being delivered. And that's exactly right. So our plateau right now is 22.5, uh, 22.6, we're gonna call it 23. We're gonna call our peak inspiratory pressure 24. So 24 on our peak inspiratory pressure, 23 on our plateau, and our tidal volume that was delivered was exactly 450 milliliters. Now, just like we did in the previous videos, I'm going to take another rubber band and I'm going to reduce the compliance of this test lung. So I put this on here like this, and we'll see what happens. Now you have to give this time to respond because the ventilator is now trying to figure out like, wait, what's happening? You see, our tidal volumes are coming back at 300 right now. And now 415. And now 437. Now 432. So you see what happens in PRVC or in auto flow when working with the Drager. What you find is that when you have changes in compliance, which is what we've simulated here, the ventilator says, oh, I need, to get, I need to increase the pressure to deliver that volume. And so we see that's what happens. So now we're gonna do an inspiratory hold. We're getting back our 450 now, we're doing an inspiratory hold. Look what just happened. Square waveform, inspiratory hold, no significant drop. Look at that. Basically your plateau is now 31 and your peak inspiratory pressure is 32. 32, 31. When we come over here and look at the volume delivered, we see 459. Perfect, okay. Now, we take these rubber bands off and that's going to simulate an increase in compliance. So we'll just take those off. Now look at your volume, immediately goes up, right? Look at your volume over here. Your volume is now 600, 600. But watch what's happening. The vent's gonna say, wait a second, I need to turn pressure down. I need to get this, this pressure. I need to deliver less pressure because I need smaller tidal volumes because 600, 582, 568 is greater than my target tidal volume of 450. So you see where the pressure is now decreasing. And we can just sit here and wait because we need that to get back to 450 to see where and how we can evaluate our pressure now that we've improved compliance with our test lung. 
and there's our 453 coming in right there. 454, 433, we're gonna go ahead and hold, hold this now. Inspiratory pressure hold, freeze that. We did get a little slight drop, but that's due to the compliance of the test lung. That's why that does that a little bit with the test lung. We see our peak, our plateau pressure is about 17, and we see that our peak inspiratory pressure was 19. So 19, 17, and our delivered volume here came in at 445. So that was baseline compared to decreased compliance compared to increased compliance. Now remember, just like in previous videos, we're gonna take this simulator with that little bitty hole in it, and we're gonna put this in line into the test lung and see what effects airway resistance has in PRVC. We also have to return back to our baseline. So I'm gonna put this rubber band back on to get us back to our baseline pressure. So here we are, back to where we started. One rubber band was baseline, but we have this airway resistance simulator in line. So let's see what happens here. Now our volumes are already down to 323. So you're going to see the ventilator is going to say, wait a second, I need to increase pressure to get these volumes back to 450. That's what PRVC, auto flow, V-Sync, Volume Control Plus, whatever it is you're working with, that's what it does. It targets a set volume, but it does so by regulating pressure. And it will change automatically. So we still haven't gotten there. We're trying to get to 450 right here. 415, 426, 433. See a lot of movement in the, in the, in the waveform here? That's just the, the funkiness of the, of the test lung here. That's all that is. 443. Let's see if we get one more increase in pressure. Now oh, the vent says I like it right here. So now we're going to do an inspiratory hold. Now, we see now where we're getting this big drop. Again, like in pressure control, I want to look into this and learn more about this because I'm not expecting that to happen in pressure control because in my mind, the vent's going to hold at the pressure it delivers. But it's okay. We can learn this together. So my airway, my plateau pressure is 22, and my peak inspiratory pressure came in at 37. So that's 37, 22, and delivered tidal volume at 451. All right. So we've collected our data. Using our test lung, we have the ventilator in a pressure regulated volume control type mode on the Drager, it's called auto flow. And we have assessed baseline, we've looked at decreased compliance, increased compliance, as well as increase in airway resistance. I've been collecting the data, let's go back and look at it and see what these numbers and see what stories we can learn from this data that, this data that we've collected. Alrighty, so we've been looking at the ventilator and now I've been taking notes and writing down numbers. So here's the numbers that we've collected since we've been looking at PRVC with the test lung and looking at changes in compliance and resistance. So remember, we started at baseline. We started with a peak inventory pressure of 24, a plateau of 23, and a tidal volume of 450. Now remember, this is going to be important because when we set our ventilator up, we targeted a tidal volume of 450. And remember, in pressure regulated volume control, that target tidal volume is what is going to drive the ventilator in regulating the delivered pressure. So we decreased the compliance. Initially, tidal volume went down, just like in pressure control, which is what's going to happen. But you saw the ventilator go, wait, I got to give a little bit more pressure. I got to give a little bit more pressure. And it kept increasing the pressure. It ended up Peaking out at 32, a plateau of 31, with a delivered tidal volume of 459. Our target was 450, that's in the ballpark. The ventilator said, cool, this is the pressure that is needed to deliver that tidal volume. That was with a decrease in compliance. Now what we noticed here is that when we 
increase the compliance. We took off both rubber bands and we showed it in, we simulated an increase in compliance. Look what happened. Initially, our tidal volumes went way up because we had improved compliance and we're in a pressure control mode of mechanical ventilation. Some people say, well, pressure regulated volume control, that's a volume control mode. Well, it is, but it's a pressure control style. In other words, the breath is pressure controlled and I time cycled. So with a square waveform, we saw that earlier in the video. So it is pressure control that is automatically regulated by the ventilator to achieve that tidal volume. So when we increased compliance, volume went way up. And the ventilator said, wait a second, that volume's too high. So what did it do? It decreased pressure down to 19. Our plateau was 17 and our volume was 445. And the ventilator said, this is the pressure that is needed to deliver 450 based off of this compliance. It's very interesting to me here. Now what we notice here also is, is that when we did our inspiratory hold, look how close our plateau pressures were to our peak inspiratory pressure. They were very, very close. And that's because again, it's a pressure control breath. So when you do that inspiratory hold, that pressure is held throughout the hold. Make it a slight drop, but not a significant one like what we saw in the volume control video. Now the last one we ended on was increased airway resistance. And remember when we changed that, we put the airway resistance simulator into the circuit. We found that initially tidal volumes went way down and the ventilator said, wait a second, that volume's too low. I need a tidal volume of 450. And so it slowly increased pressure breath by breath until it got to a pressure of 37, which delivered a tidal volume of 451. That's because of the airway resistance. Now we did do an in-story hold and we did see a drop down to 22. Again, can't explain this right now. I'm gonna dive into this and figure out what I'm missing on this. Was not expecting to get that big of a drop in pressure control type ventilation. If I was in volume control, I would completely understand it. But in pressure control, it doesn't make sense. But hey, I admit when I can't explain something and I'm telling you, I'm gonna be looking into this to figure out how we see that drop when we do an inspiratory hold in PRVC. Maybe it's a test lung. I don't know. I'll keep you updated and let you know. Nonetheless, what we recognize is that how do we recognize changes in compliance and resistance in a mode such as PRVC, which on the Drager is auto flow. Some call it VC plus, some call it auto or, or, or V-Sync. Some call it PRVC. They're all the same thing. They target a tidal volume, but they use pressure to regulate when, where that pressure is. So they regulate the pressure to achieve that volume. So it's kind of a blended mode of volume control and pressure control kind of gets kind of confusing, but that's what it is. So how do you know if there is a change? How, how do you use it? How do you recognize it? Wait a second, something's not right with my patient. My patient's compliance is getting worse. Well, it's right here. Baseline was 24. When compliance went down, pressure increased. Tidal volume stayed the same. So you have to think of PRVC much more similar to volume control where you see that volume stays consistent, but the pressure rises. The only difference is, is that in PRVC, the vent is regulating this rise and this decrease in pressure. Same thing with airway resistance. How do I know I have an airway resistance problem? Because my pressure increased significantly to establish and to ensure that that 450 was delivered. Well, what, how do I know my patient's getting better? How do I know when my, my compliance or my resistance is improving? Well, now you see that it doesn't take as much pressure to achieve the target tidal volume. That's PRVC. That's auto flow. That's V-Sync. That's VC plus. Bl dual mode ventilation. Using pressure to deliver a target tidal volume. Recognize that and keep that in mind. I do want to show you one thing here. Remember, check out the video description below. Go 
to and sign up for this free course right here where I put cheat sheets and little tidbits of information that is intended to help you along your journey as you become a respiratory therapist. Or maybe you're already one and you're just looking for, for refreshers or reminders or things that maybe help you teach the new respiratory therapists coming into our field. It's a, it takes a village and we've got to work together. You can also find my courses that I have available for purchase, the TMC boot camp to help prepare you to pass that TMC exam, and then also uh, basic ABG interpretation, and many more courses still to come. Working on one right now, surrounding everything about anatomy and physiology, just to make your life a little simpler. That's PRVC, Compliance and Resistance. This is where you find me. Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, Twitter at Coach RRT, Gmail, Respiratory Coach at gmail.com. If you ever have a question like, I wonder what, feel free to send me an email. You can always text me 817 968 7035. I'll respond to you and say, hey, occasionally send you a message, encourage you to be the very, very best respiratory therapist you can be. Inspirational, motivational, educational content. Occasionally, nothing excessive. And it's not a group text. It's just me and you sending occasional messages. You can also send me questions through that texting platform as well. Okay, thank you for watching this series. It's been fun doing it. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.